News that seemed increasingly inevitable over the past couple of weeks became reality Thursday morning. Mike Boynton is out at Oklahoma State. I thought OSU should keep Boynton and avoid paying his big buyout. Use the almost $7 million for NIL or facilities or anything other than paying a coach not to coach. Others looked at a near-empty Gallagher Iba Arena and a woeful win-loss record and said it was past time to move on from Boynton. Whatever you think about OSU's decision to fire him, it doesn't much matter now. It's been done. Time to think about what's next. And who is next? Who should be the next men's basketball coach at OSU? I don't have a name for you, but I do have a checklist. But before we get to that, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel on YouTube. Just hit the subscribe button and it will help me continue to help you by bringing content you can't get anywhere else. I also want to say a word of thanks to these sponsors for supporting The Jenny Carlson Show. MidFirst Bank, the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum, FireLakeJobs.com, NextGen Roofing, Two Fellows Movers, 988, Oklahoma's Mental Health Lifeline, the Oklahoma Ford Dealers Association. Drive into your best in Oklahoma Ford dealers today for the best deals on Ford's full lineup of trucks and SUVs. Ford is the best in Oklahoma. Well, I'm guessing OSU Athletic Director Chad Weiberg already has a short list of candidates he'll be targeting for his men's basketball opening. And while we could guess at some names, Doug Gottlieb, Bryce Drew, Will Wade, well, scratch that last one. He's got more baggage than a Samsonite store. The reality is that history gives us a pretty good idea of what will work at OSU. The checklist is clear. Number one a love for OSU. Now, Mike Boynton had as much love for OSU as anyone on the planet. He was as good an ambassador of the orange and black as anyone over the past seven years. And just because he was fired, that doesn't mean a passion for OSU shouldn't be on Chad Weiberg's checklist. It's important for drawing recruits from places like Dallas and Chicago to Stillwater, America. It's important for rallying donors and boosters to get behind the program and donate to NIL efforts. Both of those things will be crucial in rebuilding the program. Now, passion for OSU might be most likely from an alum. That's been the case with other OSU coaches over the years. Mike Gundy, John Smith, Josh Holliday, Alan Bratton, Eddie Sutton, Mike Holder. But there have been plenty of highly successful coaches who loved OSU without being alums. Dave Smith with Cross Country, Chris Young with Tennis, and Larry Sanchez with the Equestrian Program have won OSU's most recent national titles, and none of them have a degree from OSU. Heck, Kenny Gajewski might be the greatest ambassador for OSU coaches now that Boynton's gone, and the softball coach graduated from OU. Love of OSU can come from all sorts of candidates, but it's an absolute must. Travis Ford didn't really have much of it, and ultimately, that soured the fan base. Brad Underwood didn't have much of it either, and it sent him running for what he perceived to be a better situation after only a year as Oklahoma State's men's basketball coach. The Cowboys need a coach who loves OSU. Number two on the checklist, the ability to sell the program. Selling it to donors and boosters and fans, yes, although winning will sell them better than anything but selling the program to recruits and transfers is where the true magic lies. Quite frankly, this is another area where Mike Boynton was better than his record suggests. Everyone knows about Kate Cunningham, Boynton's biggest recruiting win, but if you look at this year's team, it wasn't without talent. Quite frankly, it had way more talent than the record would indicate. But talent is the name of the game in college basketball. Get two or three really good players and you can transform your program quickly. Take a look at what K-State did a year ago. Jerome Tang was in his first year in Manhattan, and frankly, the Wildcats weren't in a much better spot than the Cowboys are now, a tradition-rich program that was dying on the vine and running off fans. But Tang dipped into the transfer portal, and lo and behold, he darn near turned the Wildcats into a Final Four team. Tang should probably be the patron saint for all down-and-out programs looking for hope. Truth be told, though, OSU men's basketball coaches have a good track record of getting top recruits to Stillwater. Boynton had Cunningham, Travis Ford got Marcus Smart and LeBron Nash, Sean Sutton got James Anderson, Eddie Sutton got a laundry list of players over the years. The fact that OSU has been able to draw big-time players over the decades is good news for the next coach. 
You can get high school recruits to OSU. You can make a splash in the portal. The big question, what do you do with those players? And that brings us to number three on the check checklist, the track record of success. This might be the biggest determining factor for success at OSU. When OSU has hired a basketball coach who's been a successful head coach elsewhere, the Cowboys have fared well. And I'm thinking of coaches in the past 30 or 40 years, Eddie Sutton, Travis Ford, Brad Underwood. Now, Eddie was way more successful than those other two, but all three of them had been successful head coaches before taking over the Cowboys. And they were successful in Stillwater. Sean Sutton and Mike Boynton had no head coaching experience before taking over at OSU, and both were let go. Now, Leonard Hamilton hadn't been a head coach before taking over the Cowboys, and he was a success at OSU. On the flip side, Paul Hansen and Jim Killingsworth had been head coaches at lower levels before moving to OSU, and they weren't great in Stillwater. So a coach who's been successful as a head coach elsewhere isn't an automatic version to success, but it sure seems to portend better results at OSU. Does that mean Doug Gottlieb should be out of the running? I'm on record as saying OSU needs to take a serious look at the former Cowboy point guard when it next found itself in need of a head coach, and that time is now. Weiberg and company should absolutely consider Gottlieb. His love of OSU and his ability to sell the program would be off the charts. He blows every other candidate out of the water on those two checklist items. But having a track record of success, that's where the likes of Bryce Drew and Richard Pitino, Dusty May and Darian DeVries, Steve Forbes and Nico Medved start to look intriguing. I'll let you look up those credentials of those potential candidates, but all have been successful as head coaches. Listen, I don't know who Chad Weiberg is looking at to be OSU's next men's basketball coach, but I know what the OSU athletic director should be looking for. Finding a coach that checks all the boxes won't be easy, but absolutely is imperative. Thanks for listening to The Jenny Carlson Show. Remember to subscribe to my show on YouTube. It's easy, and it really will help me a lot, which will really help you a lot. If this happens to be your first time hearing or watching The Jenny Carlson Show, please leave me a comment, too. Also, you want to subscribe to our newsletter. We'll send our content right to your email inbox. Just go to selloutcrowd.com and sign up. It's easy and it's free. Thanks again for being here. We'll see you next time.